All right, this is an analysis of Blade Runner 2049, starting from the opening shot and continuing. I'm going to start with the opening shot. It's an extreme close-up of an eyeball. The camera is slowly zooming in, and as it zooms in, the eye opens. And it's a good way to open a film, uh, but I think it's a little bit more than that. Uh, the, the, one of the central themes in, uh, of the film is about consciousness and the soul and uh, what it means to be alive. And looking into the eyes is the window of the soul. So I think that the symbolism here is, is partly that, uh, partly awakening, partly consciousness. Uh, you know, the transition from eyes closed to eyes opens uh, is a good way to open a film. Uh, and it's never really established who this is, uh, whether it's a replicant and in the film it's an artificial human or a real person's eyes. And I don't think that anyone could tell the difference because of the way that they're built. And then it transitions to a completely different shot. This is an exterior shot. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly what it is, but you're flying above a solar panel array. And the camera is dollying forward while it's tilted down to reveal uh, the scale and the scope of this array. But the shape of the eye is still there. So there's a transition from the visual shape of the eye to the visual shape of this opening shot, but it's something completely different. It's showing you a solar panel array and the tower that collects it, presumably. Then it shifts to a more traditional view so you can understand what it was that you looked at. If you didn't see it and understand it the first time, that was a little bit more abstract. This shows the tower, the mirrors, some reflection coming off the mirrors. And these are things that exist in real life, but when you see in the background, especially in some of the other shots, uh, you start to see that there's more than just one, that they're stacked next to each other in a vast landscape, which is really best revealed in this shot, this, this uh, tilting up shot that's uh, tilting to reveal not one, not two, not three, but four or five. The skimmer flies over the top, and that's where you're getting a lot of the other shots from. Now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, continues to tilt up, and you kind of reveals a very smoggy, polluted-looking world, and it's California 2049, which is revealed in, in text. Um, and that shot really says a lot about the world, and a lot of this is all world-building. The flying cars, uh, the large-scale solar panels, the, the fog, it's all starting to paint a picture. Then it shifts to the interior of the skimmer. I'm going to move this out of the way. Um, and if you're watching, you can see it's autopilot. Uh, Los Angeles police is established twice. The character's here introduced. You see that it's a detective. And you're inside the skimmer. There's some slight bob to the camera movement, and they, they did that to make sure it still felt like there was movement. Because uh, in a car, even a flying car, there's going to be a little bit of a bob, and you can see that here. And that bob continues to this um, close-up shot uh, behind the back, over the shoulder. And it shows the main character asleep. Um, and that's kind of a good action to start out, you know, that the main character is bored by the flight and not interested in looking out the window or seeing the world or they've seen it before or it's just so drab and dull, why bother? Um, again, you know, all these little things paint a really strong picture at the beginning of this film. Um, and then the next shot uh, goes back to an exterior shot. Now we're not looking at solar arrays anymore. What we're looking at is agricultural land. And again, a lot more of that fog. And if you add up the solar panels and the agricultural land, you know, it's basically revealing more support structure. There's no cities around, but it's got to be supporting a vast amount of, of humans. So you've got the agricultural land, you've got the solar power, and in this one you start to see some reflections of a possible hint of a sun shining through the clouds. Then it switches back to a close-up. This shot shows the hand more in focus than the rest of him, still kind of leaving some of the character to be revealed. Uh, another action is about to occur, and that's the waking up moment. You know, that lets the viewer know that, that we may be transitioning to uh, the, the final destination of this flight. The next shot goes back to an exterior shot. Uh, it's still dollying in or flying forward. But what it's doing is it's revealing another more barren landscape and different structures. And it's not exactly clear uh, what they are. But then the next shot uh, cuts away to an interior shot. Uh, it's a medium shot because what you're seeing is a reflection of a person in a suit uh, reflected in a green pool. And it tilts up again to reveal a hand in the pool. And so the person's right there. And the hand is showing you what that pool is about. And it's worms. And it's a protein farm. And that's established later in the film. But that's showing you what it's doing to support the city. It's got protective gear uh, as a detail all around, and then they give you a more of a long shot or a medium long shot, uh, I'll call it, to reveal the scope of the operation, the pool, the tubes, the green liquid that's being fed in to give nutrients to these creatures that are, are being bred.
Um, then it switches to this shot. It uses a silhouette here through the translucent uh, sky, uh, kind of like a greenhouse. And you can also hear a really strong audio quality. And he sees the skimmer flying low nearby. Could just be going by, but as this is a movie, this is more important. And the next scene, the camera's craning down to follow a closer shot of that silhouette of the skimmer landing. And you see a lot of smoke coming up. And then it switches to the exterior of the skimmer. A lot of smoke uh, in there, trying to kind of keep it all shrouded uh, to hint that it's landing and the gases are expanding. And then this piece detaches. It's a drone uh, that takes off on its own and starts to fly. And as the camera cranes up to follow it, it reveals another detail of the set, which is the tree. Um, the last shot of this opening is a static shot. It's a long shot. Uh, and you basically see two silhouettes, three. The details of the skimmer partially revealed by uh, fog, um, the silhouette of the main character. Still, you haven't seen them in full detail. And then this tree, which is another piece of the world building. So if you go back to the beginning, we've got solar panels uh, for energy, we've got agriculture for food, and we've got these thing, uh, these worm farms for meat, and the smog and the grayness of the world, the flying car, and then this tree, which if you look closer, it's dead. There's no branch, there's no leaves, there's no small branches, and it's actually being held up by wires. Um, and that's another important detail that, that plays later into the story. So in the first 16 shots, it does a really good job of establishing the world and revealing the main character without giving away too much.